you know, Harvard has an endowment of over a billion dollars. Why aren't we taking Harvard's endowment and taxing it? I mean, we're bailing out their students' loans. Harvard's not having to spend any of his money, and they're, they're covered in anti-Semites now. Uh, the, the, these are dangerous times on college campuses, among other things. You've got students at Harvard marching in the streets, chanting death to the Jews at this point, basically. We should tax their endowments and give that money to Israel. Boy, wouldn't that not just be a beautiful, beautiful bit of justice? Something is really, really wrong with left. We all, you and I, joke that uh, that progressivism is a mental illness. But there's something really festering within progressivism that that's that's worse. And Charles Cook, Charles Cook is a uh, he lives in a fine resident of Jacksonville, Florida. Hello, WOKV. Charles Cook is a writer for National Review. He's one of the editors of National Review. He's a uh, one of the great uh, imports from Great Britain. Great guy. He's embraced Florida. He's embraced the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's just he he's embraced American football as his own. He's a great guy. And one of the things Charles Cook at National Review has noted several times is that the left plays Calvin Ball. Now, I assume every one of you is a fan of Calvin and Hobbes. You should be if you're not. Calvin and Hobbes. It, it wasn't the most uh, transcendent cartoon ever. That would probably be Charles Schultz's Peanuts, really set the standard for what a cartoon could be. Or The Far Side, which I miss. But Calvin and Hobbes was the best comic ever. It appeared in the funny papers or the comic pages of newspapers across America. I have the complete unabridged Calvin and Hobbes set. It was and remains the gold standard for me in cartoons. That and The Far Side. But Calvin was a little boy who had a stuffed tiger that would come alive when no one was around named Hobbes. And Calvin played a game called Calvin Ball. The rules of Calvin Ball were very simple. There are no rules except to the extent the rules benefit Calvin. And if the rules of the game begin to not benefit Calvin, the rules will be changed so that they do benefit Calvin because Calvin must always win Calvin Ball because, after all, it's his game, and you gross little girls like Susie, if you're going to play it, you're going to lose to Calvin. And if you win, well, you lose because, in that case, the rules are changed so that the person with the highest score is actually the loser and the low score is the winner. That's Calvin Ball. Calvin always wins. The left is playing this wild game of Calvin Ball. The New York Times. I, I I wonder what the unsubscribe rate on the New York Times is right now, as a matter of fact. Given the, the large number of Jewish readers in the New York City metropolitan area of the New York Times, I cannot believe they've become as pro-Hamas as they are. But the New York Times and the Washington Post both might as well be letting Hamas write their news and, and opinion stories. The New York Times literally has a piece that the pro-Hamas protesters who are engaged in support of Hamas by tearing down the flyers of the missing hostages in Israel, that they're engaged in a form of protest by doing that, that that's what that is, that they're protesting. It's a subtle protest. And when the uh, groups out there film them, and post the pictures of the people tearing down the flyers. Well, those are the bad people because they're turning protesters into what? Victims. This is Calvin Ball. You see what it was when people started putting up the flyers that had the missing persons reports and the faces of the victims. It was to show the world the victims. It was to show the world what happened. It was to show the world that that these are innocent people that Hamas has captured and dragged off to Gaza. And you will note no one on the national or international stage is calling for the return of the hostages other than the Israelis and Joe Biden. There are a whole lot of people on the left who are all about the poor Palestinian victims of the Israeli bombing campaign who haven't said jack about the Israeli victims or the Israeli hostages still outstanding. 
And these people tore down the pictures. They tore them down because they didn't want to have the world see the atrocity because they wanted to cheer for the monsters. And you can't cheer for the monsters when the monsters are doing what they did. So they tore down the pictures so people couldn't see. They tore down the pictures because they didn't think these were innocent people, but occupiers, the enemy. And now the New York Times wants you to know they're the victims. The victims on the flyers, they're not victims. It's the people who tore down the flyers who are the victims. This is the New York Times. This is Calvin Ball. This is Calvin Ball at Cornell University. A student who is a safety officer at Cornell has been arrested. His name is Patrick. Patrick is an Asian student who was a safety officer at Cornell. Patrick Dai, D-A-I, Patrick Dai has been arrested and charged with making threats to kill, rape, and slit the throats of Jewish students. Patrick Dye, these are some of his comments. If you see a Jewish person on campus, follow them home and slit their throats. Rats need to be eliminated from Cornell. Here's another one. The genocidal fascist Zionist regime will be destroyed. Rape and kill all the Jew women before they birth more Jewish Hitlers. Jews are excrement on the face of the earth. No Jew civilian is innocent of genocide. That's from a student at Cornell University where they were also tearing down the pictures. And and read his thinking here. Jews are excrement on the face of the earth. No Jew civilian is innocent of genocide. That's what the student wrote. This is a student at Cornell. He's not a dumb kid. He's a safety officer. He's a part of Cornell campus engagement. And, And he said no Jew civilian is innocent of genocide. That's why they tear down the pictures. Because they think these aren't innocent victims. These are Jews who support genocide. That's what they believe. They're saying it openly. And the New York Times plays Calvin Ball and changes the rules. And now suddenly these people who you videotape behaving badly, now suddenly they're the victims. At Stanford University, remember they they chased off the judge, the federal judge who was speaking, the kid who organized the protest to chase the judge off campus is now been asked to help select the new dean of the law school. They keep changing the rules to benefit themselves. Hedge, they win. Tails, you lose. That's Calvin Ball. That's what progressives are doing. And you should not play their game. I want to be very clear and frank with all of you. If you are tearing down the posters with the faces of the victims of Hamas, if you're tearing down the pictures of the hostages, You should be exposed, you should be outed, you should be shamed, and you should be blacklisted from employment from coast to coast in the United States because in the face of evil, you chose to side with evil. There is no shade of gray here. If you tore down these posters, you're not a victim, you are a victimizer, and you're on the side of evil, and you should be exposed your name should be highlighted and you should be denied a job everywhere except flipping burgers at some third-rate restaurant in some motel on the side of a U.S. highway never to be seen by polite society again because you are evil and you chose to side with evil and there is no nuance in this at all. 